but she just took my time in, so I'm thinking it's time to, to go. Welcome. My name is Mark Jones. My business is Sharondale Mushroom Farm, and uh, <coughs> today I want to talk to you a little bit about mushrooms, mycelium, and mycorrhizal fungi. How many of you all do mushrooms now? How many of you all grow mushrooms? That, that's, a, that's a mushroom joke. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we use fungi for uh, developing resilience in our farm systems. Of course, as you know, we live in a diverse microbial continuum from the soil through plants into the atmosphere through our bodies. And we've learned a lot about the, uh, the microbial ecology of human health in the last 15 or 20 years, and we know that that's tied to soil health and biodiversity of uh, of uh, soil organisms and, uh, and how mineralization uh, affects our, our plant growth. And uh, so what we're looking for is nutrient density. And the primary emergent property of agriculture should be good health, right? This is what we're all after. <coughs> right now, we don't really have that. We have that on a small scale. And I'm sure you all can think of many different problems that we have right now in our agricultural systems. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the first talk with a subliminal message um, that you'll probably see at a farm conference. So basically, we're talking about agroecological transformation. What kind of transformation do we want to see in our, in our agricultural system? And I think in order to do that, we need a paradigm shift in language uh, from that of, uh, of violence-based language to more one of collaboration and cooperation of serendipity and beauty of resilience and transition. These are the, these are the ways we need to talk about what we do, not about biocide and, and kill, kill, kill. Um, and then also uh, the pedagogy that we use, the way we teach about agriculture and transition. Uh, <coughs> I believe that practitioners and farmers should be driving the research agenda for, uh, for this transition. And that uh, in order to, uh, to learn about it, we need these sorts of gaps. We need to do more peer-to-peer -peer teaching uh, for people that know what's going on and ask questions of one another. Uh, because when you hear an extension talk and they, they give you the reduction of science about two variables in an orchard, not only with other people, but with our ecologies. And that's important. So what does that look like? Uh, so <laughs> resilience is an emergent property of the economic and ecological and social dimensions around food production. And uh, so we're looking for, uh, we're looking for a food production, biomass production that conserves resources and renews natural resources. Uh, advances social justice and animal welfare, uh, builds community health and wealth, and fulfills the needs of all eaters on the planet, not just humans. <laughs> so what does regenerative or restorative agriculture look like? Well, first it's, uh, it's all about soil, as you well know. And uh, soil remineralization and building soil. We build soil with organic matter, re remineralized with rock powders and other things that, uh, and sea salt and other things that bring minerals to the microbial populations in our soil. We also uh, can use biochar. There's a biochar talk later today. I think that'll be very interesting. Uh, you know, and increasing the soil biology as a result, and then using plants, trees primarily. And, uh, and animals, uh, rodents and uh, mob grazing and that sort of thing, put carbon back in the ground. <coughs> so when we put carbon back in the ground, we change the hydrological cycle again. So we're putting more water in the ground. Every, uh, so about every, uh, every 
ton of carbon that goes, every per percentage point of carbon that goes back in the soil can hold another 20,000 gallons of water per acre. Okay, so this is what we're really trying to do. This pool of water that is a persistent haze out of the atmosphere. Persistent haze doesn't, uh, doesn't nucleate in the rain and fall back to the earth. It just traps the heat. So 95% of the greenhouse gas that traps heat on the planet is water vapor. <coughs> it's not carbon dioxide. So when we talk about uh, greenhouse gases, water vapor is the number one problem with trapping heat. <laughs> so if we bring that down into the ground and we plant trees and we plant we keep the ground covered with plants. What happens with trees is that they're, <clears throat> they're a bacteria that live in the stomata, and as the tree transpires, they put these bacteria into the atmosphere, and those cause rain nucleation, and the rain falls back down. You've probably seen it on the side of a mountain where clouds are being made right over the top of the forest. Okay, this, this is gonna fall back down. This changes regional and local hydrological cycles, so we don't have the desert.